Um, hello, I'm Margaret from Blue Monkey Tea Company in Pittsburgh and today I will be talking about chocolate and tea and how to pair this, these two. Uh, with me today is Nina and Eric and they're going to help me with the tea and chocolate pairing experimentation. So the, today we're going to first uh, let me tell you a few words about each one of these um, components. So, as we know, tea comes from, uh, let's show you one tea, this is the jasmine tea. And uh, since most of you already watched my programs, you know that tea comes from a plant called Camellia sinensis. Uh, it likes tropical, subtropical climate. And uh, it, the tea leaves used to brew it to brew tea are actually usually just the two top leaves and the bud. Chocolate is made from seeds of the cacao tree and I have a little replica wow. here that looks like a football of the cacao pot. This is what they look like when they're totally ripe. They reach a size of about 12 to maybe even 14 inches. And uh, inside of this cacao pot uh, there are seeds, which we call, here you guys can play, oh. <laughs> but my, Mikey can play too, I guess. So, Patricia's Hi, saying she can't hear. Patricia cannot hear me. Um, okay, I think other people can hear, so Patricia, can you? Is that my mom? Can you? <laughs> yes. Hey, <It> mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. It's Eric's mom. Uh, so, it, we'll, <clears throat> We're trying our best to maybe hey, move the speakers she a little. She's okay. on the road. She's driving. Uh, oh, okay. She's watching while she's driving? <laughs> My mom. Hi. <laughs> she's a dedicated fan. Okay. Hello. So this uh, this is the cacao pod. That's uh, where they get seeds from. And then they there's a whole process. And the final result is chocolate. Ooh. Or cocoa. Ooh. Mom's watching. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Cindy. Cindy. Hi, Hi, Cindy. Okay. We're on Facebook, right? Yeah. We are on Facebook, and we're not sure if we're on Instagram. Hopefully, we are. Yes, are we? You're on okay. Okay. Hi, welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, so, <clears throat> all tea comes from the same plant, whether it's green, black, oolong, white. Uh, the differences in these teas, uh, their flavor, aroma, color. Uh, stem from the <clears throat> processing of the leaves after picking. Uh, the chocolate, uh, let's talk about types of chocolate and uh, it's pretty simple. We have um, dark chocolate, we have milk chocolate, uh, we have white chocolate and of course they add all sorts of yummy things like this. This here is um, orange chocolate. Uh, just so you are clear on this, the white chocolate actually doesn't have any cocoa in it. It's basically made with um, just the fat content and sugar. Yum, yum. Mm. <laughs> <Sounds> <laughs> good. I want it. But the fat content is actually from the uh, cocoa liqueur, which is a part of the cocoa plant. So you get some of it. Uh, I and, love fat content. And that brings... Sierra's watching. Hi, Sierra. Hi, Sierra. Hi, Sierra. Hi, Hi Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Hi, Mel. Okay. On Facebook, we're Blue Monkey Tea Pittsburgh. Right. Yes. Yeah. I okay. There. Uh, speaking of caffeine content, uh, because I know people usually like to ask this question, uh, there is usually tea has about one third of, of caffeine of coffee, and it doesn't matter whether it's white, green, white. I'm sorry, uh, white, green, black, oolong. Uh, they have very similar caffeine content. In fact, some lighter teas, like white teas, might have even a little more caffeine. But I'll tell you about this in a different class. So, uh, let's see. That's my notes here. Talk, talk. Did you, you learn something? Other? Did oh. you learn something already? Fat content. Did you know that? <laughs> in white chocolate, so. But did you know that some teas... <laughs> Or tea only has one third the caffeine of coffee. Yeah, that you learned it's crazy. Oh my! Like no wonder that you have always wanted coffee. But I love tea. I, I get all the caffeine I need from tea, so I just drink a lot of it. 
We rehearsed really well. <laughs> well, tea is also very good when you're dieting oh, because yeah. you won't have um, a uh, caffeine crash later. Right. Yeah. What do you so. think is better, black tea or green tea? You know, what, what would be better for you? But green tea has more health benefits because it's unoxidized, so it has more antioxidants. And um, in fact, people who drink at least three cups of green tea per day, they found that they're definitely much more healthier. They're healthier and they live longer. Okay. We need to get on that. More yep. green tea. Now, what about caffeine and chocolate? There is some. And uh, dark chocolate usually has um, about 20 milligrams of caffeine in one ounce. Now, let me tell you about how much is one ounce. So this chocolate bar chocolate bar on average has 3.5 ounces so a little less than one third of the chocolate bar is one ounce and this is actually the healthy amount this is the amount that you okay to have because chocolate actually has some health benefits as well well i had hear. an entire chocolate bar <laughs> last night at my dad's so. well, maybe you're ultra healthy <laughs> and uh, the dark chocolate has about 20 milligrams of caffeine uh, comparing to one cup of tea, one small cup of tea will have about 40 milligrams. Uh, milk chocolate has only, uh, let's see, six milligrams, so it's a little, but some people are super sensitive to caffeine, and if they eat a whole chocolate bar before they go to bed, even if it's a milk chocolate, they're still going to have some caffeine plus, they're going to have what? A sugar rash. Oh. <laughs> I do fall asleep after I eat sugar and things. So good. Mary said, how much chocolate did the 120-year-old lady eat? Uh, I believe she ate about two pounds, a little bit over two pounds per uh, week. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Two pounds a week? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. Wow. And the white chocolate, because it doesn't actually have any cocoa in it, fat has no caffeine, but it has pretty high fat content. So okay. is white chocolate more fattening? Uh, actually, than regular chocolate? Black, believe it or not, but dark chocolate has usually pretty high fat content because if there's no milk at it, there's still they have to have some kind of cons consistency um, to make it um, shelf stable, mm -hmm. so it's not liquefied. But that's all about um, heavy duty um, scientific stuff. Let's have some fun. Um, oh, I also have a picture here of the coca pods on the tree, but people who live in Pittsburgh, they can see them in person at Phipps Conservatory. There's actually a cacao tree in, uh, you guys can see that. I never knew that chocolate was like this. I thought it came off the tree as a candy bar. <laughs> I knew that. And this is, for those of you who join me for the first time ever, this is a picture of the tea plant. We grew our own tea plant, but didn't make it. And um, here's the tea plant. So look how little this one is. That's a... Yeah, that's like a bite size. Oh. So let's combine these two together now. Um, first, we're going to... I'm going to tell you what is the best way to actually taste tea um, and once you get a hang of this uh, you will probably be able to taste other foods better as well and um, it's sort of like with wine tasting uh, but there's several different steps that actually will help you to uh, taste the tea and experience it uh, deeper and better so let's start with um, we're going to, first you observe the dry leaves. You pour, I'm going to use Guy Wan because it's going to be, um, I actually like to brew my tea for tasting, um, to discover taste better. I like to drink my teas in the Guy Wan, which is a Chinese little cup with the lid, but I'm not sure where the lid is now. Uh, appreciate, observe the dry tea leaves. Uh, then we're going to brew it. And um, follow the brewing rules. All the rules are on our website, bluemonkeytea.com. And I'm sure many of you already know. One thing, super, super, super important. Make sure you don't steep green tea longer than two minutes. So 
So take a good look here, smell it, see if you get anything. Oh, so <laughs> tasty, so, such good aroma. And then once you have um, tea made, geez, I guess look at May I have a glass cup, please? Glass mug, hello? We need a glass mug, help! <laughs> we need, what, what do you call people that help, like I'm a set, the assistant, the, oh, assistant, the hand. gopher, mm. or something? No, I'm talking about person who like patches things. The assistant? Oh, that's the assistant. I guess they call it. Uh, so you will also, then you're going to uh, visually observe the liquid, the color, maybe there's some cloudiness, um, or maybe there's some little particles of tea. Uh, definitely kind of, you guys see, we have one, two, six different teas here. Each one of them looks likely different. Mm -hmm. And uh, Can you guess which one there is? Green tea? That's a green tea. You have signs here, but they're uh, reversed. Oh, so I can't uh, This is green tea? So this is the jasmine tea that we were just smelling, and I'm going to pour a little bit in my cup. And as you know, I love glass cups because you can see the color of the tea. There you go. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> hey, lesson number two. Tea is usually hot. Hot, hot. Americans. People who are so <laughs> iced tea. People, yeah. So, yeah, people so used to iced tea. Uh, okay, so this is a beautiful amber, um, kind of golden color uh, liquor, and it has, uh, it's very clear. Um, and usually green teas can be either like really light yellow, or they can be. You can wait. Oh. <laughs> you can wait. <laughs> then you smell it. See, um, you can take a smell a lot of like I love smelling tea. Sometimes I get more pleasure actually from smelling tea than even drinking uh, because uh, the olfactory experience is a big part of the tea drinking experience um, in general. Also, after you smell your tea, you will taste it, and it is best to actually slurp tea. Because this way, um, the air you draw the air along with the liquid towards the back of your mouth, and the aroma it sends the aroma towards your nose, so you can pick up a lot more aroma when you do that and taste. But you don't have to do. But this tea is absolutely delicious. Oh. <laughs> I am Can always try? amazed. You, will, you can wait. Oh. Actually, go ahead, guys. You can oh, start with this. Pour. Yeah, you can pour a little bit and start drinking. Uh, then you will, after you swallow, you pause. I'm talking, but you don't. You just keep your mouth closed and exhale with your mouth closed. And try this, guys. Take a sip. A slurp. A slurp. I'm gonna keep your mouth closed. Swallow. And then exhale with mouth closed and exhale through your nose. <laughs> Great slurping technique. Fantastic slurp. Oh. Sarah says, uh, Sierra, this is Sarah. Sierra says, ha ha, Eric. Ha ha, Sierra. <laughs> Ha ha ha, Eric. Brew some tea in Sanibel, would you? Okay, so what tea are we drinking, Eric? The jasmine with flowers. Okay. okay. So there's flowers in there? It's the, it has flowers, but a lot of jasmine teas are just scented with real flowers, but um, I'm not going to get into this um, now. Um, there will be probably a special class of just about jasmine teas. Did you have flowers through your nose? You blew bubbles. Oh, no, no, I'm just kidding, just kidding. Okay, um, so we have now, let's see, if we, to prepare well for tea and chocolate tasting, you prepare your teas ahead of time, and we have several teas here that, and they're very good for um, this type of experimentation. We have Assam, 
black tea from India, which is right here on my table as well. We have Genmai Cha, which is a Japanese green tea with rice, with roasted rice in it. So it um, make, makes it taste toasty and uh, nutty. Um, the next tea is um, uh, chestnut. So it's actually a flavored tea, which I usually for tea tasting. There's no not any of them. That's good to know. <laughs> that is good to know. So usually I don't recommend. Yeah. So if you have a nut allergy. Oh yeah, yeah. That that is very important. Like if you have um, nut allergy, um, you always make sure what is actually in your tea because like our shop specializes in high quality teas and our tea like almond tea actually has real almonds in it. But we always make sure to put allergen labels on them. So people get, you know, a little sticker on the, on the bag that says contains almonds or contains uh, coconuts. We don't have any teas that will contain peanuts, though. So mm -hmm. a lot of companies opted out from that because of the safety reasons. Peanuts would be weird in tea. I don't know. I don't know if I would like peanuts in my tea. But I want to try the chestnut. We have hazelnut tea, Ooh. but it just has essential oil. Okay. So... Um, we, with the other tea, we have milk oolong, which is amazing tea, and many of you already know this tea. It's a tea that has um, some like a creaminess, um, uh, flowery uh, 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 notes in it, and uh, even though it doesn't have any flavor added to it. And it's rare? It's very rare. <laughs> is it expensive? It's not that expensive, but uh, it's worth every penny. It's $5.99 per ounce. But it makes about five, six mugs of tea, which you can re-steep two or three times. So mm -hmm. it's like almost you get like three times as much. Now, Jasmine, and then the last tea here on this table is Lapsang Surchong, which is a smoky tea. It was a favorite tea of Winston Churchill, oh. who added scotch to it. He oh. really liked that. So this is that Lapsang Surchong special smoky type of tea. And then I have chestnut tea here. And um, the jasmine, which I already showed. Sierra wishes she was here tasting. Yeah. Oh. Well, you are here with us in the spirit, yes. and hopefully you're drinking some kind she of does tea. I love tea. I know. Uh, okay, She's and. Not lying. <laughs> and we have writing pads, so you guys can write your notes. Oh. Back to school. Oh. Ooh, I don't want to go back to school. Teas and chocolates can be matched um, as like and like. Uh, for example, milk oolong with uh, white chocolate or as a contrast. For example, dark chocolate with um, jasmine tea because jasmine tea will be light and uh, mellow and uh, while dark chocolate is going to be strong with a little bit of bitterness in it. And of course, the same tea can be paired with different types of chocolate. And this is a much, this is a lot of fun. You can do a lot of experimentation. Possibilities are endless. Um, so the first tea, pour the first tea, please. Assam. Assam? It's Assam from India. Like I said, dark, strong uh, tea. Now let me, while you guys are doing this, I'm going to explain uh, to everyone how to actually do um, taste the chocolate and tea at the same time. So, first you take a sip. How much do you want? And then just, you just, just a, break. Just a sample. Oh, God, that's hot. Uh, hot let's tea. see, let's use the dark chocolate. Oh my. That's a very so tiny hot. little piece of chocolate. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you chew it and you swallow it. Oh, that smells strong. Try it to without chocolate first. And then you have a <clears throat> you have a special table for your notes. Ah. Where you will be you write the tea type, uh, taste of tea alone. Mm -hmm. uh, and then plus one type of chocolate, like I said, take a b bite of chocolate, um, consume it, <laughs> and then when you have all the flavors still in your mouth, 
take another sip of tea. First tea, then chocolate, and then the same tea again. And then focus, I know this presentation is a little rushed, but this all should be done in a calm and relaxed environment. Nina looks like she's relaxed. She's uh, usually relaxed. She's the opposite relaxed. of me. I would say strong, wouldn't you? I said earthy, a little bit bitter. A bit bitter, you say? Yeah. Bitter, I say. <laughs> okay. Did you put your pinky Plus, out? And then one chocolate, two chocolate. If, sorry, if, if I, I don't see anybody on the Instagram because I don't have my second tablet here, but I just want to say hi to everyone. Now, oh, to help you, <clears throat> to help you guys um, describe your teas, you have. It's bitter. Oh. What's bitter? That like coffee. That's tea. Which tea did you try? Oh, the Assam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now try to use like two or three descriptors. Oh. Um, examples of descriptions: bright, brisk. Clean, earthy, floral, malty. fruity, malty. Good job. Uh, this tea he is read it off malty. the paper. <laughs> but it Don't perfectly, let him fool you. It perfectly describes. Usually, it's best to have <clears throat> some kind of um, <clears throat> little tasting uh, dictionary like this. There's two pages. Did you guys get two Toasty. pages? Tasty. Okay, write it down. If, if you think. you have so many words in the box. You are. You do. Can I have a piece of chocolate? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. So this is going, um, here you guys. Which chocolate should we go with this? You might want to take like one large piece and like break it off in a few smaller pieces. So you have some for, um, to pair with the other teas. We also have water because between tastings, it's good to rinse your mouth and the palate. So I take a piece of chocolate and a sip at the same time. First a sip, first a sip of tea. Swallow. Now a little bit, a little bit of chocolate. You can take that. Oh, I get to keep it all. Uh, Here you go. Swallow. Mm -hmm. And then some and more then, tea. Yeah. And then close your eyes. Exhale with your mouth closed. It's so, good with the orange. Are, are you having orange chocolate? Mm -hmm. Okay. But try to use more descriptive words and just good. <laughs> Did I say good? Did I? <laughs> oh, it's good. It pairs well with the orange chocolate. What did you say? Exquisite. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this would be example of like and like or contrast. <clears throat> like, like and like. Right? Is that what I'm writing? I feel like it's like and like because they're both dark and have powerful taste. Okay. Overwhelming the senses. So you tried with the orange chocolate and now you're trying it with milk chocolate. White. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, white chocolate. That's better, actually. You like that better? Mm hmm With the white chocolate. Could you pour me some more? It doesn't make the tea taste as bitter for me. Don't burn yourself. Hey, we have five more teas yeah, to go. Yeah, we to the next tea. But is it different? Do you, do, you, do you taste a difference after you kind of coated your mouth with the chocolate and then drinking tea? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it positive or negative? What does I, that mean? Like, do you like it better after you eat chocolate or doesn't matter that much? I like this tea better after the white chocolate. White chocolate, okay. I like the orange chocolate more. Uh, someone is asking, the paperwork is available online. 
I will post it on Facebook and I'm also I'm going to post it on our website not sure when hi Denise <laughs> yeah we have a company today my daughter Nina and her friend Eric he's my friend too hi Denise yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are such good friends. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and this should uh, be available. It'd be fun for people to have their own little parties and have yeah, fill up yeah, these absolutely. So this uh, for the time, this uh, tough time that we're in now, you can definitely have a small gathering um, or do it even on Zoom or Skype with your friends. Have the same teas, the same chocolates. So just to go over this one more time, we're doing tea and chocolate pairing today. We're trying six different teas and uh, pairing them with, we have four different types of chocolate, white, milk, uh, dark, which is, I believe, 70% dark chocolate. And also we have, which one did I miss? Dark chocolate with orange. Dark chocolate with orange, just. And does anybody know which tea would go really well with dark chocolate and oranges? Dark orange chocolate. I'm talking about like and like, and this tea is right behind me here. Oh, I can't see it all. Is it the milk oolong? It's this. It's Earl, Earl, Earl Grey. Grey. Earl Grey because, I, why? Because Earl Grey has citrus notes from bergamot. Bergamot is a citrus from a Mediterranean region. Earl Grey, mm. which we didn't brew today, but if you want to have oh. a nice like and like comparison, yeah. um, you can definitely do Make pair it. this mm. with the uh, orange flavored chocolate. Although I also like to pair Earl Grey with dark chocolate. Okay, what tea are we trying now? Gen Mecha. It's actually pronounced Gen Mecha. That was so close. <laughs> yes. Gen what? Gen Mecha. Gen Mecha. Cha means tea in Japanese and in many other languages. In fact, uh, the origin. Good job! Good job, Eric! <laughs> the only time you'll get away with sleep. Here, do oh, it again. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> that was a very long um, slurp. Probably one of the longest I've ever heard. <laughs> I wanted to get it. Good job! Good job! Alright, this time I'm going with milk chocolate. So this is Gemaicha or Genmaicha, as some people call it, and uh, Nina is pairing it with white chocolate. Mm -mm. I'm sorry, with milk chocolate. Uh, let's see. Let's say light, so, very clean, flat. That uh, was definitely a light light. So Genmaicha. Uh, Barrett is watching too, Nina. <laughs> hey, Barry. And Chad. Can you bring me my boots, please? <laughs> that I love Hi, Chad. Well. Okay, so get, get my... Hi, Barrett. Hey, Chad. <laughs> hey, Chad. Get my cha is a uh, Japanese tea. Uh, like I said, it has roasted uh, rice uh, added to it, and some of the rice pops during uh, roasting, and it looks like popcorn. So some people call it popcorn tea. Mm -hmm. Now this tea is in bed by itself, right? The, it's my favorite so far. Yeah, this it, it has these like it's very smooth. It has nutty, toasty uh, notes, and um, it's kind of it's almost like creamy. Like it has a very nice, almost creamy consistency. So when you're tasting it with milk tea, would you say it's like and like, or is it a contrast? It's like and like for me with the milk chocolate, and then with the dark chocolate, it's like and contrast. Okay. Eric? This is my first piece, so I don't know yet. Okay. You guys can ask me questions. Meanwhile, I'll be glad to answer some tea or chocolate questions. Churchill's favorite tea is at the end. Churchill's Ooh. favorite tea was Lapsang Suchong. It's a smoky tea, and yep. he he added scotch to it. <laughs> he likes like to add scotch to it, and of course he was smoking a big cigar. 
Uh, Natasha says the camera guy doesn't have to keep panning the camera. We can see and hear all three of you. Thank you, Natasha. <laughs> You're higher. Instagram can't. Oh, the Instagram can't. Um, okay. Uh, but it, it might be really interrupting, you know, if you keep all right, moving. I'm done. But can they... Can they see something now on the Instagram or just see me? Instagram, it's you and Eric. Me and Eric, okay. Yeah, and Nina's hand. <laughs> well, it would be nice. Uh, okay. Can we install the Instagram oh, phone on a different uh, stand, maybe? I think this is fine. No. You guys, you would not believe how much video equipment we've been getting lately because uh, we're learning as we go along with these uh, programs and uh, uh, we started with like one tripod um, and uh, it's actually all, both phones are tied up with some kind of um, Mitchell is using pipe cleaners it's very Mickey Mouse chestnut. are you trying chestnut tea ah. okay you need to describe this tea now, before you taste it with chocolate, and give me at least three descriptors. Try it again. It's harsh. harsh. It's harsh. <laughs> it's strong. It's strong. Cool. Hard yeah. harshness. It's a because it's a black tea. Um, burnt. Toasty. Okay. I would like to say it's heavy, but marine, along with it being quite nutty. <laughs> However, I find it to be wonderful. I would think I would like to drink this on a cold, snowy night with chocolate. Fudge, maybe. In front of the fire. Oh, in front mm. of the fire with your significant other. Or at least a blue monkey. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Uh, this is for guys that were late. I have a replica of the cacao pod. This is what they look like uh, when they uh, are on the tree. And then they will cut it in yeah. half, you uh, extract yeah. the pulp like with cacao nibs. Oh, and Mitch, can you pass me cacao <laughs> nibs? We have them on. Hi, Stan. You remember Stan? He's at the wedding. Hey, Stan. Brandon's brother. Ah, I remember Stone very well. Okay. Cut white chocolate. Okay. So they are tasting uh, chestnut tea, which is a black tea. It has a nice chestnutty, warm, nutty flavor. However, it is a black tea, so it definitely has a little bit of astringency, as all black teas. Although some really, really good black teas like Golden Monkey. They have a very rich, full flavor, but no astringency at all. Um, now, this tea will go really, really, really well with milk and sugar. <laughs> Just a suggestion. And yes, you can do pairing with chestnut tea with milk and sugar. And um, trying to we have a lot of people who love this tea any of you anybody there who loves uh, chestnut tea especially at this time of the year me <laughs> we have a, a new aficionado <laughs> okay I think there's a waste basket here guys so you can throw your cups away if you want oh, okay. and then like I said every now and then you might want to rinse your mouth with water mm, and cleanse yeah. the palate Nina didn't like the tea. She didn't like the chestnut. It's okay. It's okay. You don't have... In fact, tea tasting is not about actually sitting and enjoying the drink as much as it's a way to get to know and to experiment with teas. I love it. Because there's so many different teas, so many different flavors, notes, undertones, and somewhat, sometimes when you drink tea for the first time, you might not you might taste something not necessarily that you like but then eventually the more you taste the tea uh like with coffee when you first had coffee did you like it from a first sip no <laughs> exactly not. it's definitely an acquired taste the same thing with tea and uh, so sometimes you develop a taste love for tea after you know several tastings so yeah. don't give up Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, 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 no. and so not everything I I like this one. 
not everything has to be sweet and yummy. It can be very interesting. It smells very nice. Okay, so now we are to one of our most popular teas, Guangzhou Milk Oolong. And why do you call it Milk Oolong? Because it has a creamy kind of buttery taste. It smells buttery. And it's also reminiscent of orchids. They said orchids. Orchids. Oh. It's reminiscent of our kids. I was like, that's interesting. Okay, she's making fun of my Polish accent. <laughs> Paula said, I haven't tried chestnut tea yet. Well, if you like strong black tea, you'll like this one. I wish I had some of the teas you guys taste there. You want some? Yes, we got plenty. Let me finish this. We got cups. And actually, I'm in the mood for... It's definitely creamy. Eric, where are you hiding the chocolate? Ah, oops. So I didn't mean to keep them on. I think I did try it with the dark chocolate. Is there anything milky in this tea? Mm -hmm. It tastes kind of milky. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Take one more sip, close your eyes, and what place or time does it remin is reminiscent of? I have the milk oolong drawer. This reminds me of the nights that you would heat up warm milk for me before bed. Oh. How is that? <laughs> Stone says that Eric is keeping chocolates for himself. I am. See, look, the whole plate. For me. So this is the milk oolong, which is very, very interesting. Um, say the name slowly. Guangzhou. That's area in China where it comes from. Milk oolong. Or you can just call it milk oolong. It's one of the most famous teas out there. Um, it's oolong, delicious. Oolong tea. It's good with any chocolate. I think so because it doesn't have such a powerful taste. It's very um, bland. I, I said pale, point, and thin. What does point mean? Well, if you read the dictionary, <laughs> it says a flavor that is brisk, acidic, and sparkles on the tongue. <laughs> Lingering. Yes. However, I wouldn't H say... How did you think this tea sparkles? I would say it's brisk. That's mm. what I think. Oh, okay. And I, hey, everybody's different. Everybody has totally different set of taste buds, different genetics. And... Um, so if, I, if I bring 10 people or 100 people here and have them taste one tea, everybody will have a different experience. And that's what's nice about human nature. We're all different. Put your pinky but tea up, will unite us. We're going to take a selfie on your I blog. can take your picture. Oh, you're not doing this. Unless you like selfies. No. I think I did already. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Plus, this video is recorded, so you guys can have that video afterwards. Go to my Snapchat. I don't look amused at all. <laughs> okay, okay. We have people who are seriously interested in subjects, so let's keep moving along. Oh, Go. I apologize. <laughs> keep going. You will be going to the principal office. The tea trouble. principal. Don't want to get in trouble. Uh, the other tea I forgot to mention, which is not on their table, is matcha, powdered tea. Um, as you know, those who already had matcha, matcha can be pretty bitter. And this is due to the fact that there's a lot of antioxidants, um, specifically catechins in green tea especially, and ground green tea has four to five times as much catechins uh, and other antioxidants. And that what accounts for that uh, bitter uh, flavor. So it is really, really good tea to mellow it out with some chocolate. <coughs> We've already had this one. Yeah. Isn't but you didn't, one? did you have it with chocolate? Okay. I didn't write it down though. So this tea is going to be a little bit of a shock. Oh God. <laughs> Shocker. Make sure you smell it first. Whoa. Exactly. It smells like bacon. <laughs> okay, write it down. Write it down. <laughs> Does it smell yeah, like bacon? That smells like, you know, jerky 
you know, some sort of cooked meat. meat. <laughs> yeah. Meat. In fact, you are so close to what else can be done with that tea? Braising? You can smoke it. We actually, you can use it in it's cooking. Thing. It's called Lapsang Suchong. Lapsang Suchong. Is that, is that a Chinese. 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 Yeah. So how they make this tea, they, after it's processed, the leaves are positioned above the smoke. Uh, sometimes it's like a, on the, uh, below the floor and they smoke pine uh, needles and that smells permeates tea leaves and gives them that specific smoky kind of almost uh, like a little heavy and toasty oh, aroma and flavor which not a not a lot from first sip right i want to have a clean palate when i try it okay that i like it a lot better than i thought i would okay honestly okay it's very surprising now this, very surprising this tea will pair superbly well with chocolate and which chocolate would you choose for that well honestly White chocolate pairs well with all of them. <laughs> oh. Did you oh. did you try all different chocolates you've made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I'm gonna go with the milk chocolate. Okay. <laughs> Did you not like it? I'm gonna give it another try. <laughs> Hi Barbara. Thank you. Yeah, we we got some young ones here today to liven up the uh Hi Barbara. Who's watching? Hey and Joe. Hey Joe. And, uh, and Stone only drinks Lipton tea. They also share with their friends, Ooh. and that really helps Ooh. too. Blue what? monkey tea. What? Stone only drink has drank Lipton tea. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Oh. And that's oh, okay. okay. That's, that's, fine. Fine. that's fine. It's a good start. It's fine. a good start. Uh, but ooh. okay. I surprisingly like it actually. Oh my. It reminds boy. me of a campfire. Yes. Oh my, Barrett would like perfect. this. So, Barrett is still watching. Speaking of Lapsang Suchong, Empire. you can use this tea to, um, you can marinate chicken in this, um, in a, you make a very <laughs> strong brew and you can marinate chicken or fish, you can make meat wrap, uh, Mitchell even, cr uh, he'll like crush or sometimes just spreads the tea over his mashed potatoes for that smoky flavor. In fact, uh, bakery, Gabby oh Jules, a French bakery here in the Squirrel Hill, they uh, used our Lapsang Suchong to make their bacon macaroons. Am I pronouncing it right? Oh. What else can I tell you? After this presentation, I will be, I will stick around for a little longer. If anybody has questions, you can just uh, uh, make comments, or if you have questions, throw them in right now, and I will be glad to answer them after the um, session. Uh, I have this program is uh, part of the series called Saturday Tea Saturdays Live, which I um, do on every Saturday at 5:30 p.m. here in Pittsburgh Store and Blue Monkey Tea Company. Next week, we're doing hot toddies, hot tea toddies, spiced chais, and some other fall favorites. Uh, so join me for um, my um, tea talk next week. And there's a big plan ahead of us. We're going to have a big Halloween tea party on Zoom. Woo! This is not, this is on Zoom because I want to see all of you guys in your costumes and I want to see what special Halloween teas Spooky. and maybe you can name them you are drinking so we I know we are going to have a blood tea this is one of our Halloween specials a blood tea Ooh. is it red it's pretty red <laughs> do you have a do you have recipes that require tea, or can you recommend a cookbook that does? Uh, <clears throat> we have everything that you hear today. It will be available on our website. In fact, I'm going to... Cookbook. Oh, the cookbook. There, there are cookbooks. Oh, incorporate. If you're thinking about cookbook incorporating uh, 
lapsang suchong or other teas in cooking or baking. Um, there's probably some books out there, but I have, uh, I did one segment specifically on cooking with tea, and it's available on our website, bluemonkeytea.com. I even made blue pasta. Blue I remember, pasta? I do remember that. Look like little Smurf noodles. <laughs> okay, <laughs> did we try that one? Yes, it was gemaicha, which is the second one. It was okay. like a toasty, nutty. I didn't taste the rice. Well, you don't taste the rice, uh, you taste the toastiness and nuttiness in that tea. But this tea is a great option for people who want to start drinking green tea, but they're not necessarily crazy about this uh, astringent, uh, grassy flavor, because this tea definitely adds uh, that nice toasty um, uh, profile. And uh, Nina, what was your favorite tea today? Surprisingly, that one. Lapsang Sushong. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Same as a uh, Churchill. I have a feeling this might have something to do with the fact that you are a coffee lover and mm -hmm. you like those strong, full-bodied. Uh, Maybe, teas. but I wasn't crazy about these ones. Okay. Okay. But something about that one was intriguing. Now, okay. Now, would that pair better with the milk chocolate or with the dark chocolate? Milk. Milk chocolate. Yeah. Eric, what was your favorite tea today? I loved the chestnut tea. Chestnut tea? Oh, it was so tasty. It needed no sugar or cream or anything. You could just drink it straight. Um, but my favorite tea to pair with coffee was our first tea. Chocolate. Excuse me. To pair <gasps> he said a coffee word. <gasps> to pair with. Shame. I liked the Indian Hassam. That was definitely my favorite tea. Assam. Assam. Hassam. Assam. Yes, awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Get it? Oh, awesome, awesome. I was thinking like, hi, Malkushanta. I was thinking like, what? Hassam, what kind of tea is that? Is, is there something I don't know about? Or, But it is Assam, and the reason it's called Assam is because, can you hit me a map that's behind you? I think there's a map. Is there a map? No. No map. No map. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. It's a part of uh, India. It's a region called... Oh, here we go. <laughs> so it's a, this is a map of India, and India has three major tea growing regions. Um, Assam, right here, right here. This is Assam. Darjeeling, uh, which is in the foothills of Himalayas. That's why those teas are so good, because they grow on a high elevation. And also there's one area here called Nilgiri, which means Blue Mountain. It's in the, it's in the south. And this little piece of land is actually Sri Lanka, which otherwise w before used to be called what? Huh. What? what is what is the <laughs> most popular tea that people know starts with letter C? Um, chestnut. <laughs> chestnut. Say. Calcutta tea. Say. Ceylon. <laughs> Ceylon. Ceylon, or ah. some people here pronounce Ceylon because. Ah. Because Sri Lanka used to be called Ceylon, mm -hmm. and you would not believe how much tea comes from that little island here. Mm -hmm. They are one of the main producers of the black tea, but the reason for that is they're very close to the equator, which um, enables the plants to grow all the time. There's no dormancy period, so they pretty much collect the leaves all year round. Yep. May I, uh, Margaret, may I make a reference? Yes. You taught me something. Okay. In the movie Toy Story from 1995, Buzz Lightyear is having a tea party, and he references sucking down Darjeeling. I just now learned that he was referencing yeah. the type of tea he was drinking. Okay. Yeah, I learned a lot here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm very proud of you. Yes, it's quite interesting. He was Mrs. Nesbitt in that scene. Some of you might remember. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Okay. Go, Thank you for sharing. Um, you guys see how much, well, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. And uh, this is this was just in a nutshell to show you uh, what are the possibilities, not only with tasting teas by themselves, but uh, when uh, pairing them with um, chocolate. Uh, you can also pair teas with other foods. Did you get it? You see the hat? 
um, let's see, uh, such as uh, cheeses, some, you know, you can pair tea with cheese. Ooh. Yeah. This would be fantastic with cheese because the smokiness. Gouda. Ooh. How about that? Yeah, you guys should have your own experimentation. You can maybe do a live program yeah. and, and uh, post it on my Facebook. Only if you visit. Well, we can do it virtually. Oh, we'll do Zoom. Yeah. Or you can be my guest on Facebook, you know, even if you're not here. Oh, okay. I would be happy to. Uh, so, what else can you pair? Come on. What Fruit. other foods? Fruits. Crackers. Crackers. But crackers are cookies. usually cookies, all different cookies. And um, this tea, Lapsan Suchong, pairs really, really well with very, very sweet desserts, like an Indian-type cheese dessert, you know, those little cheese balls. Have you ever had it? It's like dripping in... Crab Rangoon. Cheese balls? Not... not well, crab Eric makes be. a great cheese ball. I do. I make a fantastic cream cheese ball. I'm talking about sweet, like sweet cheese dessert, mm. you know. He also and makes a nice sweet Oreo ball. I do. I do all really? the Really? Not him, his mom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mom. <laughs> but you, you, just you watch and you know how to make it and you enjoy them. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. Like Khaled two. said, thank you for the Toy Story info, Eric. That will make a great trivia question at a tea party. Indeed, indeed. Like you, Honestly, so yeah. Much. I didn't even know he referenced it. And uh, speaking of um, vid movie references, book references, um, in what tea leaf reading has um, to do with the Harry Potter movie? Harry Potter reference. What was the class that they were doing tea leaf reading in? Um, I've never seen the Harry Potters. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Any Harry Potter um, fans oh. out there? Okay. Nina, you have to Harry Potterize no, him. Yeah, come on, you have the chance to. to... All right. I'm getting mad. We'll talk about this later. It was a divination class. Yes. Then uh, predicting future uh, through all different methods, among them uh, tea leaf reading. In fact, speaking of tea leaf reading, a few weeks ago I did a tea leaf reading class, so you guys can watch it. It's available on our website, blumankitea.com. So uh, did, you, did you see like the future at all? Yes. When, yes. When does this it pandemic go Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it tells you like if you're gonna have money. Oh. You're gonna die. You're not gonna have money. I'm sorry. <laughs> Crap. Well, you just got a new job. But you're not going to die. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So you just didn't finish reading the week. We're all going to, you know. It was Professor Tralongi's class, Barbara says. Good job, Barb. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Cindy says The Grim. The Grim? That's a scary movie. Does that? Do they do tea readings in The Grim? Okay, so uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. Thank you, my lovely guests, um, for coming here tonight. I would just um, like to thank our yeah. wonderful host. You're welcome. It thank you so for having us, treating us to chocolate and tea. Visit the Blue Tea Company. You will not be disappointed. And uh, enjoy your teas. Um, have a great weekend. Uh, do not follow politics. Arrivederci. So bye. 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 Adios.